Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Basics. In this video I'm going to discuss how to get to another planet or interplanetary transfers. And this is a complicated topic and we'll just be going through the, well, the basics of it rather than demonstrating it this time. And of course we are here taking a look at our solar system. This is the real solar system. Uh, so Uranus, Neptune, Pluto out there, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, and then as we zoom in quite a bit, Mars, uh, there's various asteroids and Vesta and Ceres there. And then Earth is the blue line there. And then Venus and Mercury. So there are planets inside Earth's orbit and there are planets outside Earth's orbit. And those will take sort of slightly different techniques to get to. But we'll first take a look at Mars, which is a very popular destination. Uh, so that is our focus. And starting with that focus, we need to talk about how to first depart Earth. And the goal here is to make sure that we are departing Earth in the velocity of Earth's orbit. So actually, let's focus on Earth here. Earth is going around the Sun this way, counterclockwise. And what we want to do is also exit out going that way. Otherwise, we will be countering Earth's, uh, Earth's orbit. And that will, that has an effect, uh, it will lead us to get into an inner orbit. So if we wanted to go to Venus, we would want to counter it, basically slow down around the sun. So going inside, we slow down around the sun. But to get to Mars, we want to speed up around the sun. And so we're going to go along with Earth's orbit, the same as when we are getting into a higher orbit around Earth itself, we want to go along with our existing momentum around Earth. And so we go prograde. Uh, so we go along with our existing velocity. And so since our existing velocity around the sun is the same as that of Earth's, we will go around, we will sort of exit out this way, but we'll uh, boost up, we'll increase our energy a little bit, and that will lead us to sort of an arc like this. In fact, let me uh, use the pen here. So if I can draw this properly. So we already have a lot of speed thanks to Earth around the Sun, and we don't want to mess with that too much. Uh, sort of like that. And then we want to encounter Mars like this. Why do we want to encounter Mars like this? Well, Mars is going to be going around this way like this. And what we want is when we reach Mars, we want our speed to be going in the same direction that way, basically. And so if we instead encountered Mars here, let's say we go really fast, we could do that. So this would be a faster trip, right? It's a quicker, it's a smaller line around the sun. So it's a faster trip. Uh, but our velocity would be going that ways, right? Along with this line, but Mars's velocity would be going this ways at that point. Okay. And that gap is going to increase the amount of uh, delta V, the increase the amount of propellant we need to slow down around Mars. If we are going in the same direction as Mars, then that will decrease the amount of propellant we need to get into Mars orbit, if we are using propellant to do that. But in any case, if we're using aero capture, like I talked about in a previous video, if we're using aero capture, that will also decrease the amount of heat and stress that we uh, experience when trying to capture around Mars. So we want to generally be going in the same direction, both out of Earth and when we arrive at Mars. And this sort of transfer, which is basically a semi-circle around the sun, half, well, a semi-ellipse really, a semi-ellipse around the sun is called a Hohmann transfer. And it's generally considered uh, barring certain very complicated techniques uh, involving Lagrange points and all, this would be a very efficient transfer. So that's a very efficient transfer, but it takes some time because it's half in orbit around the sun, basically. And so if you want to get there fast, you're going to need to spend a whole lot more delta V, a whole lot more propellant to like meet it up with here or here. Uh, you can, but it, it gets really high really fast as far as how much fuel you need. And we can take a look at that. There are plots to see how much propellant you need to get from one place to another. And one mod for Kerbal Space Program that lets us see this is Transfer Window Planner. And so if we want to go from Earth to Mars, and we're going to get into a tight orbit around Mars. So let's plot this. 
And you can see the time of flight is restricted to between 129 days, that would be very fast, and 388 days, which is very slow. And the blue areas are the optimal points. And you can see there's actually two related optimal points here, but then there's this red zone. At the optimal points, uh, this is the best one right here, it says that the amount of speed we need to eject out of Earth with is 3,958 meters per second. So that is, after we get into Earth orbit, that is how much additional we need. And then when we get to Mars, this insertion delta V is how much we need to slow down and get into a tight orbit around Mars. Again, you might be able to aero capture using a heat shield and save yourself that amount. So they have a no insertion burn option, which says flyby, but it could be for an aero capture as well. And in that case, they won't show you the injection delta V. And that, uh, since it's not taking the delta V it takes to get into Mars orbit into account, that changes when the, uh, the best time to go is. Because if you don't have to worry about capturing around Mars, then maybe there's a different opportunity that is optimal. And we see that that's the case, though it's generally in the same region, right? It's obviously around here-ish, this is the right time, and this is very obviously the wrong time. So, but let's say we want to manually capture around Mars using our engines. Then we've got two optimal points here, and the total delta V that's required is 6,705. But take a look out here, as I move my cursor here, this red region is 58,000. 58,000. Okay, and so here it's 23,000. So when it's bad, it's really bad to go. Uh, if it is not the right time, it is a very bad deal. If it's the right time though, let's see, this is the right time, but this journey is going to take 222 days. Let's say we want to speed it up, but I want it at the right time. Now this is a longer trip. This y-axis is travel days. This x-axis, I should have said that in the beginning, is the departure date. So this is when we're going, and this is how long it's going to take. So here, it's going to take a long time, but it's still a good amount of delta V that we're going to take. So a good amount of propellant that we're going to need. And same here. So there's two points, one that's quicker, one that is slower, one that's probably more appropriate for like cargo, and one that's probably more appropriate for crew. But we're talking about 222 days. But if you want to go faster than this, let's say half a year, then immediately you're going to tack on another 2,000 meters per second here. And then if you want to cut it down to just four months, that's 13,000 combined. That's the trip there. And then so if I click here, the ejection is 4,400. That's not too bad. It was basically 4,004 and we're just using 400 more. Seems nice, right? But then to slow down when we get to Mars, it's taking 8,600. Now, again, you can aero capture using a heat shield or like the tiled bottom of Starship, but that 8,600 meters per second is translating to a vast amount more heat. And so that is difficult. So when you see people talking about getting there in four months, that is a very different situation than doing the normal home and transfer in 220 days or so. So when do we, how do we figure out when to go? I mean, we can have this tool, Transfer Window Planner, but is there a sort of uh, easier way not relying on, well, I mean, it is easy, but not relying on some external tool to figure this out. Let's try and figure it out. Well, you can sort of think about it logically. Uh, this orbit splits the difference between Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit. So what you can think about is Earth's orbit period, Earth orbit period, plus Mars orbit period, now there is a real calculation to calculate the length of time it would take to go to uh, along this ellipse. You can look up orbital periods and you sh should be able to find the proper equation. But this is sort of a uh, estimate given uh, quick numbers. So Earth orbit plus Mars orbital period divided by two uh, will get you sort of a rough estimate of the whole orbit, right? That would be the whole orbit. But then we'd have to divide by two again. So because we're only doing half the orbit. Okay, so we're getting an average, this is an average of the two orbits, but we actually need to divide by two again, so basically divide by four in order to get half an orbit. 
Okay, so Earth's orbit is 365 days. Mars orbit is 687 days. That's easy to look up on Google. And we divide by four. And what we get is an expected time, I'll actually do this, of 263 days. Okay, so that is sort of the quick estimate for the Holman transfer, 263 days. And what I want to, to take a look at is here in Transfer Window Planner again. And we'll move this down here. If we take a look at where 263 days is, it's actually in the middle of the two nice spots, right? There's 263 days right here. So there's a nice spot that's quicker and a nice spot that's slower and 263 is actually in the middle. Uh, so it's a, it's a fair estimate. Uh, but really, you should think of it as sort of a range around there. And when you take a look at when we send probes out to Mars, usually they can be sent like a month before, I mean, a few weeks before or a few weeks after. So there's a range of time around it. But this will give us a good estimate for where Mars needs to be in order for us to do our transfer. And how we do that is we take this estimate. That's our estimated time that we're going to take. And we want to meet Mars here, right? So... If we want to meet Mars here, we need to make sure that we launch our mission when Mars is going to take 263 days to get to there. So Mars has to be 263 days in its orbit behind that point. So we know Mars's orbit is 687 days, so 263 days divided by 687 uh, gives us the percent of Mars's orbit or de uh, the decimal. Uh, for how far ahead it needs to be, and it's 383, and then we just multiply that by 360, 360 degrees, and what we get is Mars has to be 137.8 degrees ahead. So Mars has from that point, Mars has to be 137.8. Oops, always get that menu. Uh, this arc here. Uh, something like that is 137.8 degrees. So Mars has to be around here somewhere. Or if you want, if Earth is, since this is a 180 degree arc here, I should have said that too. This has got to be 180 degrees. It's a semicircle around the sun for a Hohmann transfer. Uh, since that is 180 degrees, then we know Mars has to be ahead of Earth by, it's actually around 45 degrees. If you actually calculated how fast this orbit is, you'll find that it's 45 degrees. If we took this number, 137.8 degrees, and subtracted it out from 180, we would get 42.2. But it's more like 44 because of exactly, because we're doing a quick estimate here rather than the exact calculation. So if you want to get to Mars, you have to wait uh, you have to make sure that it's 45 degrees ahead of you uh, if you're Earth. And each planet is going to have its own calculation like this. And you can do it by hand like this. Uh, you can look up the proper orbital period and get a more refined number. But keep in mind that if you're getting the more refined number, it still sort of depends on things that aren't so simple. Uh, in particular, why, is, why does this look like this? <laughs> right? I mean, why, why do we have these two spots? Why is there this belt of red right here? Why, why is that? And why is there not just one spot? Well, the reason is we've been looking at this in sort of a two-dimensional view, right? We've been looking at it top down. But Mars's orbit isn't exactly in line with Earth's. It's actually tilted in with respect to Earth. And because it's tilted with respect to Earth, then that complicates matters, basically. Uh, so there's an inclination difference between Mars and Earth. And that means some opportunities are going to be better than others. And that is if Earth happens to be at the point where the orbits cross, then when you're leaving Earth, when the orbits cross, it's easier to make the transfer. You don't have to worry about a mid-course adjustment or anything like that. Um, but if it's not at one of those points where the orbits cross, you may need to make uh, adjustment mid-course, just like we did for transfers to the moon, for instance, in order to fix the inclination, and that can be costly, or you need to build that into your initial burn, which can be costly as well. And basically the estimate that Transfer Window Planner was giving us was if we were going to build it into the initial burn. It's not thinking about a mid-course adjustment. But 
if you're going at the point where Mars is 45 degrees ahead of Earth, you've got a good chance of at least not getting one of the horrible situations. Uh, if you want, I can just tell you when some of the other ones are. Venus has to be 54 degrees behind Earth, and Jupiter has to be 90 degrees ahead of Earth, roughly. Okay, and then uh, the other ones are roughly about 100 degrees. Uh, it's It depends. You can see uh, Pluto's orbit is very lopsided, so it's very different. And it'll depend on exactly where Pluto is compared to Earth. Now, how often do we get these opportunities to get there, right? Because, well, if the planets have to align before we get to go over there, then there's only certain times of the year that, or of the decade, that we can travel. And for the outer planets, it's actually easier because they're going so slow compared to Earth that it really is just about one year between opportunities. Uh, for Jup Jupiter is the closest one in as far as the outer planets, and so it's more like 13 months instead of 12, but otherwise it's basically just every year you get a chance. But for Mars, or for anything that is close to Earth's orbit, Whenever Earth is getting closer to it, like right now we have to get over to Mars because we want a 45 degree angle. We're a little bit behind right now. Earth will catch up. That opportunity will happen soon. But you can see that as Earth is catching up, Mars is sort of running away. And because Mars is sort of relatively quick compared to some of the other planets, the opportunity actually takes a lot longer to set up. And it's about 26 months, or two years and two months. So things that are closer to Earth's orbit, the ideal Holman opportunity takes longer to set up. Now, how do we actually transfer out of Earth? So let's say we are in Earth's orbit here, and we need to keep an eye on Earth's actual motion around the sun. So I'm going to keep Earth's motion around the sun at 12 o'clock, or uh, that way up in front of us and the opposite direction at 6 o'clock or behind us. And generally we want to start in a relatively low orbit. We don't want to be in a high orbit for reasons I don't want to describe right now. Uh, so we're starting in a low orbit and we want to go out that way, right? Well, what we want to do is do the burn sort of like this. Like that. So it's going to be at this point. And it depends on how fast you can do the burn. You know, how long is it going to take your engines to uh, complete this sort of move? Uh, basically, you're expanding your orbit, so it's going to go like that. Up. So, you know, we get a higher and higher orbit. And then eventually, it's going to be escape velocity. So, what happens is... Get the pin back. Okay. Instead of having a closed loop... Uh, sorry. Not in a good line drawing day, I suppose. Okay, uh, instead of having a loop like that, once we reach escape velocity, it'll be sort of an open thing. Like that. It'll sort of break the opposite end. So that th this is uh, escape velocity. Hyperbola. And this is still... Uh, captured ellipse. Okay, so the ones that are snapped are hyperbolas. And in order to get to escape velocity, it's about, we'll say about, 11,000 meters per second or uh, 25,000 miles an hour. And uh, starting from low Earth orbit, so we'll put a little circle here. Low Earth orbit. That was 7,800 meters per second, or around 16,000 miles an hour, roughly. Uh, so m most of the work that you do is just getting into low Earth orbit. Going from here to up there is actually, you know, less, less than half of the trouble. Uh, except you have to have expended all the fuel to do this first, right? So that's the trouble. And so low Earth orbit is really the gateway to everything else, but uh, we haven't really gotten much farther recently. Anyway, so the 
point is that if we want to go into the higher orbit, it's uh, very similar to the way we transfer to the moon. Uh, so if we were to transfer the moon, we'll also sort of be on this side and head on out. And we have to take into consideration how long our burn is going to be. So we'll start around here to do our actual burn. And it might take all this time in order to actually get the, let's say, 3,600 meters per second it takes to get a Mars trajectory. Uh, could be 4,000, depending on the opportunity that we have. And, and how fast you want to get there. The faster you want to get there, the more you're going to have to spend on this. Yeah, that's to, uh, so that's outward bound uh, outer planets. Outer planets. And Mars. And so this is Earth's motion. Around the sun. Okay. And then to get to the inner planets, we'll start here and go directly against Earth's motion. We're not going to make any bones about it. We're going to go this way. And this is similar to coming back to Earth from the moon. And so this is to Venus and Mars. And Venus will take cost, uh, sorry, Mercury, sorry. Uh, Venus will take about the same as Mars does as far as the transfer costs. It's about... 3,600 again. Uh, you know what? I want to make sure that it's clear that we're talking about Venus there. About 3,600 meters per second uh, meters per second to Venus. Uh, this is to Mars. Jupiter, you're expecting uh, 6,000 to 7,000. Uh, Saturn, assuming no gravity assist, 7,000 uh, to maybe 8,000, let's say, just to be safe. And uh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Uh, 8,000 plus. I mean, 8,000 to 10,000 tops, really. Uh, 8,000 would probably do it. You're getting close to solar escape at 10,000. Which gives the idea that the the velocities tend to be, you know, pretty tight to each other when it comes to going to other planets. Remember, just getting into orbit around Earth costs 7,800 meters per second. That's just low Earth orbit. So, once you get into low Earth orbit, you just have to spend about the same amount to get to Saturn. The problem is, you have to lug all that stuff to low Earth orbit. So, that's the rub. Uh, yeah. But... When we talk about Earth's gravity well, it's a pretty substantial well. And here's the fun part. Once you get out of it, once you get to escape velocity, 11,000 meters per second or so. And uh, by the way, those estimates in, uh, sort of include those estimates like 6,000, 7,000 to get to uh, Saturn are just from low Earth orbit. So they include the amount it takes to escape from Earth's uh, sphere of influence. So... The thing is, once you do escape from Earth's gravity well and use that 11,000 meters per second, including the amount that it takes to get to orbit, uh, you are just in another orbit just like Earth's. Earth-like orbit. Uh, maybe a little bit lopsided. Your position with respect to the sun has not changed very much. That's uh, horrible. Okay, you got the picture. You're basically in Earth orbit. It's just a little bit offset. And... But, fortunately, it doesn't take that much more to get to Mars. Uh, getting out there costs about 3,300 meters per second, and then it takes maybe 400 meters per second more to uh, finish the transfer to Mars. So, yeah, as long as you're going in the right direction. Now, what, what does it mean if you are askew? Looking at Earth here. Let's say we're in orbit, but we do it at the wrong time. And instead of going like that, which is what we're trying to do, we want to go out like that with Earth's velocity like that. Instead of doing that, we go out like that. What does that mean? Well, what that means is we're sort of skewing our orbit one way. And that's what we would do if we are, uh, we are going at the wrong time or we're trying to meet up with Mars at an inopportune point. So instead of meeting up with Mars over here, halfway around the sun we would be trying to hit it over here uh, or some askew point 
And so that's gonna cost more when we get there too. But yes, that would be the situation where the timing is off and or we want to get there quicker. So I'm just trying to think about if there's anything else that we need to cover here. So we've got the phase angle. You'll hear the term phase angle. Phase angle is just the angle between the planet and Earth. So where, the, let's say where Mars ought to be for the transfer, where Earth is. And the center is the sun. This angle is called the phase angle. And so you can look up the phase angle to transfer to other planets. And as I mentioned, for Mars, it's about 45 degrees. And again, the reasoning for that is it's going to take uh, about 135 degrees of Mars's orbit for it to get here where we want to meet up with it. And we want to meet up with it there because our spacecraft's velocity is going to be going in the same direction as Mars is. So in that case, we're going to need the minimum amount to slow down. Okay, and uh, really the same is true transferring to the moon and everywhere else. So there are ways to expedite, but it'll cost you a lot more, especially when you get there. You might not think it costs a lot be when you go out because, you know, the delta V that cost up front is very low. But when you actually reach the location, you're going to find out that the delta V cost to slow down is going to be extremely high. So you have to keep that in mind. That's uh, one of the tricks with gravity assists. So I guess the last thing is, I'll just briefly mention the logic of how to figure out a Jupiter gravity assist. First of all, you have to be at the right time to transfer out to Jupiter. So Jupiter is going to be 90 degrees ahead of Earth, basically. Uh, but once you get to Jupiter, if you want it to slingshot you to some of the other planets, Obviously, if uh, Earth is 90 degrees behind, it's going to be here, and then we're going to sort of meet up with Jupiter over here, right? Halfway around the sun. So it's going to be here. And then it's going to slingshot us that way. So the planets that we want to get to had better be over here somewhere, right? Saturn, by the time we get to over here, Saturn had better be over here or Uranus had better be over here, or Neptune over here, or Pluto over here, right? Uh, they have to be, maybe uh, you could budget and they have to be sort of in a funnel, a region like that. Anywhere over here is fine, Jupiter could uh, slingshot us. But if Saturn is still back here, let's say, there's no way Jupiter is going to slingshot us to Saturn because it's behind now, right? It has to go in the direction of motion. We're leaving Earth here, flying out and then encountering Jupiter, Jupiter's gonna slingshot us this way. Okay, that, that is the direction. It could uh, go steeply. It might even be okay to go out to Uranus if Uranus is over here somewhere. That's possible. The one thing it can't do is it cannot slingshot you behind, right? Again, there's a whole region of space where it can't do. So the timing is so you have to make sure that those planets that you're trying to get to are sort of in the region where Jupiter can slingshot you to. That's just a rough idea. But as far as the timing for that is concerned, first, you need to make sure Earth is behind Jupiter by about 90 degrees or somewhere around there so you can make a transfer to Jupiter. And then you have to make sure the target planet is going to be where it needs to be uh, for Jupiter to shoot you out to it. And Jupiter's orbit is about 12 years. And so these opportunities to any particular planet in the outer solar system, uh, you could do one of two years sometimes. Uh, Jupiter is not going to move too much within two years, but then you'll have to wait another 12 years for the next chance, basically. So, yeah, that's just uh, the quick Jupiter interplanetary boost tutorial. I'm not going to talk too much more about that. I don't know if I've covered everything I need to cover, but uh, those are the basics. And next, we will try a more practical demonstration of it, but I've certainly introduced quite a lot of things already. So yeah, next time we'll do a practical one and we'll just go out to Mars and see how that works. 
So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.